oh boy, time for another I'm going to show off all the things that I have and you don't video. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Hello there, audience. Uh, so this is going to be a bit of an unorthodox video. As you might know, I really like music. I like music a lot. But it wasn't until a little bit ago that I started actually collecting music, more specifically vinyl records and the like. And for the past few years, I have amassed this little collection here, and today I'm going to show it off to you for funsies. I'd probably put this on the music channel because that would be a bit more appropriate, but I don't want only two people to watch it. Now, originally I was going to ease you all into this by doing a game collection video, uh, which I did shoot and was in the process of editing before I realized... Um... Even if it doesn't really give that much personality to your main character... I didn't like it. And I'm not sure how much better this is going to be, but at least I don't look like some disheveled hobo. I won't have to describe my experience with each record by going, I haven't played it yet, but I thought it looked cool. Because I have played all of these records. There's maybe one or two that I haven't actually spun yet, in uh, terminology, but I have listened to the majority of them. So while this, again, may not be... So again, while this may not be something most of y'all would expect on this channel, I th thought of just giving it a crack anyway. Despite the pretense, though, this is more or less an exercise in self-indulgence and my experiences with music and the uh, bands and artists that I grew up with or have gotten into recently. And who knows, maybe some of y'all will have shared those experiences as well growing up or recently. So this is bound to be very interesting nonetheless. Now I have all of these sorted in alphabetical order so I'm not exactly sure where to start with it. I did think about just doing the standard method of going from A to Z but I'm going to do the opposite, mainly because I don't have a vinyl of a band that starts with a Z yet, but I'm getting there. Of course, if you haven't listened to any of these people or bands, I highly recommend doing so after going through this video or wherever you find appropriate, because if I have it on vinyl, I more than likely have enjoyed it. And fair warning, my tastes are kind of all over the place, mostly mainstream and old mainstream but there are a couple wild cards here and there. I like to think it's somewhat eclectic, but I'll just leave that for you to decide. So let us start from the very end and then work our way up to the top. And also the record player I use is a very standard Audio-Technica Bluetooth capable wireless player. To anyone not in the know, it's not exactly the most highly regarded record player out there, but it works fine for me. I'll get one of those newfangled analog ones eventually when I have the space for it. See all these games here? See all these games here? I could probably just get rid of them all and then have a big old vinyl corner right here. But I like games just a bit more than music. So the first two that we have here, uh, this one is a particular favorite of mine. Yutaka's Love Light. Uh, this is a record by Yutaka Yokokura, a piano, electric piano player from Japan, who had recorded this in America in 1978. Uh, it was released on Alpha Records, one of the most popular Japan labels uh, of all time, and was not released until 1981 on their U.S. label, their very short-lived U.S. label. I actually have a couple other records that were released on that label that we'll show off a bit later. But yeah, this is an excellent, excellent mix of jazz funk, jazz fusion, with some Japanese instrumentation sprinkled throughout. There's a lot of koto, a little bit of shamisen, I believe. Like, looking at the production list, um, you got Dave Grusin and Larry Rawson. I think I pronounced that correctly. They produced so many albums like this during that time, especially in New York. And just looking at the credits, like if you know your jazz fusion or just kind of, I guess, yacht rock, if you want to call it that, I don't really like that term. There's just so many recognizable musicians on here. It's not the most well-maintained version of this record that I could find. This is actually one of the first ones I bought off of Discogs which is where I get most of my records. I know it's probably not the most ideal, but it's just the simplest for me. There's also a promotional copy 
Um, this is meant for radio, so it wasn't technically for sale, uh, but this is the one I ended up receiving. And it plays wonderfully, and I was just so, so happy when I got this on vinyl. I believe this is only available on vinyl as well. Uh, there's a few, some CD version out there, but it's uh, just a vinyl transfer that does not sound very good. So yeah, great record. I highly recommend it. And I also have one of the dude's other records. This is his self-titled one that came out in 1988. I believe this was also produced uh, by Dave Grusin and Larry Rawson. And this is around the time where jazz fusion and jazz funk was kind of like, it wasn't getting worse, but it was just kind of like losing its organic edge. But this is still a very good record. And I'd gotten this, I believe this was mint, uh, had never been opened. And this is a lot better maintained than the uh, other Yutaka record that I have. Oh, uh, just look at, look at this guy. He, like, he, he, look at this guy. He just fucking loves his little, uh, little kotos. So yeah, that's how we'll start off the Ys. And let's keep going back even further with the three Yes albums that I have. Yes, they are, yes, all-time classic progressive rock band have made several records and the three that I have I have their uh, 1970 self-titled the Yes album uh, one of their many self-titled I should say it's when they've really really made it big in America seen all good people your move yours is no disgrace Starship Trooper I believe I've gotten into this one when I went through their discography a couple years ago and um, yeah, this uh, definitely hit really hard. It's uh, just fucking great. Fucking great. Perhaps even better, though, would have to be their next album, Fragile. Uh, this is the one that has the meme song that everyone knows. There's so many other great tracks on here as well. I believe my favorite one is the last one, uh, Heart of the Sunrise. And this is definitely an older copy, but it's very well maintained and just has that nice little texture. And a nice little gatefold as well. That's great. I believe I found this in a half press books, which is a bit of a crapshoot when it comes to like collecting games and vinyls and such. Um, but there, there, there are some decent ones you find here and there. Um, when I used to go out, I would always sometimes hit up those stores just to see what they had, and I would sometimes find those little gems, just like this one. Um, but this one here I got just from the vinyl record store in my town, one of the two or three, uh, close to the edge. I got this one very recently, uh, but uh, this is probably my favorite uh, Yes album. It's either that one or Drama. If you know your progressive rock bands, uh, this is definitely high up there with like the best of them all, uh, best records of all. Just And You and I and the uh, beginning, close to the edge with all the wonderful suites that transition into each other just so seamlessly. So just excellently done. Just excellently done. I would love to get more of these records. For as well beloved as Yes are though, they are a bit of a crapshoot themselves, especially after this album had come out. Like from Relayer to Drama is just kind of all over the place. Uh, but I do want Drama and their 1983 one that has uh, Over Lonely Heart on it. Next up we got Yellow Magic Orchestra, the two records of theirs that I have. Um, this first one, this is probably their best one, Solid State Survivor. My most listened to album a few years ago. It's just a wonderful synth pop record. Was it not released in the US though, which explains the uh, label here. It's also another alpha band. These are some cheeky little mofos who just make some fun, fun, fun synth pop music. And I gotta show the vinyl here especially because it is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful yellow. Clear, clear yellow as Yellow Magic Orchestra are. And man, it's just, it just looks beautiful. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Very happy I own this one. It was a bit pricier than the others because it was an import, but definitely worth it was also worth it was the uh, American version of their next album, uh, Multiplies, I believe. Or X-Infinity Multiplies, what I want to call it. 
Now this was also released in Japan first, uh, but it contains a different track listing than the US version that we got. Because again, we didn't get the Solid State Survivor album ever. Um, but the US version of this contains tracks from that album and the popular tracks that were from the original version of this album. Because in the original version, you had those standard synth pop tracks, and then in between a bunch of them were a fair amount of skits that were in the Japanese language, which, um, unless you know Japanese yourself, it's not going to translate well. I really didn't need to get this, but the three additional tracks on here that weren't on Solid State Survivor are all really good. Multiplies, Citizens of Science, and Nice Age. Such a nice age! Time uh, <laughs> Probably a very inappropriate song, though. Okay, we are out of the Ys and into the Vs with the Vapors, uh, Nuclear Days. This was their uh, first album. Probably one of my favorite genres is just that turn of the cent turn of the decade post-punk new wave stuff that was just coming out, and this is. Probably one of my favorites from that era. Their best known song, of course, is Turning Japanese. I think I'm turning Japanese, I really think so. But the rest of the songs on here are just as good, if not even better. I think my favorite was their other single, Working for the Weekend, Working... Working Towards the Weekend? No, Waiting for the Weekend. That's what it was called. Uh, that's a Loverboy song, never mind. This and even their second album is a solid mix of post-punk, new wave, power pop, I highly, rec I highly recommend it. They even had a new album last year that um, tried to kind of recapture that their original albums, that era, updating it just a bit. Uh, but I, it was it was okay. But like comeback record from the band, nearly forty years after their last one was probably not going to be that great, but I, I think it's still worth a listen as well. But this one, if you only listen to one, it's got to be this one. Next one, we got Utopia with Adventures in Utopia. Uh, this was a prog rock, pop rock band founded by Todd Rundgren, uh, one of the most prolific songwriters of the 70s. It was a very successful side gig to his main songwriting career. I've not gone too far into their discography, but this is a very very, very good rock record. Leave the single on here, uh, Set Me Free, probably their best known song, although some of their other ones like Love Is The Answer and um, Very Last Time, which is on here, definitely a bit derivative of those kinds of sounds and I guess the transitions that a lot of prog rock bands were making in the late 70s as it was kind of sort of going out of style. But yeah, great stuff and I believe the next record we have is from its leader. Yes, of course, Tyler the Creator is the leader of Utopia, not Todd Rundgren, I was lying to you all. But no, this is Tyler the Creator's Igor, his most celebrated record to date, and the one I definitely like the most. The only one I have, unfortunately, I would like to get Flower Boy, and maybe the other ones whenever I get around to listening to them, but yeah, this this is just a, it's a great pop, R&B, hip-hop hybrid. And this version has the uh, boyfriend track uh, that wasn't on streaming services or the uh, digital storefronts. Oh yeah. Nice little gatefold cover there as well. So I just love this fuck I just love this cover so much. It just looks so great. Fucking Earthquake, Running Out of Time, New Magic Wand, Boys a Gun, Are We Still Friends? God. So many great tracks on here. Yeah, I can't wait to see what this guy does in the future. Uh, I, if he's going to continue in this style or go in a completely new and totally different direction, who knows? Next up, we got classic, classic, classic Tribe Called Quest with Midnight Marauders. I got into them during college as well. I really only listened to the first three records, but this is the one I got on vinyl because it just happened to be there when I went to Best Buy one day. Great cover and a great selection of tracks as well. Um, fucking Award Tour, Sucka N-Word, Midnight, Electric Relaxation, which I credit that song for getting me through the last semester of college. The most stressful time of my fucking life. Sadly, despite being new, the pressing isn't 
too great. Uh, it kind of skips a couple times. There's some noticeable dents in the vinyl. Uh, so I'm hoping to get maybe an older or a another new copy to kind of remedy that. But it's nice to have this here. I would like to get the other ones at some point, especially low-end theory. Uh, Tool with Undertow. Uh, this is one of my favorite heavy metal, alternative metal records. Sadly, this is one of those Amazon reissues because uh, they do some pretty good deals with vinyls, but sadly most of them are just the uh, like reissues and rather cheap. They play just fine, but this one doesn't have the uh, extra creepy imagery that's inside the uh, CD cover. You can't really go wrong with Tool, especially this record. Prison Sex, Sober, Bottom, yeah. Great shit, great shit. It was really cool seeing them return with that Fear Inoculum album. Okay, here we go. All right, and we got Todd Rundgren with Something, Anything. Uh, as many people call this his masterpiece. It's a double LP. It's an excellent collection of tracks. Most of them he did himself, did, all the, did most of the instrumentation himself. Has one of my favorite songs of all time on there. His most popular, I believe, Hello Is Me. I believe this is another one that I found in the uh, vinyl store that I had frequented quite a bit. And probably one of my favorites. Super well maintained despite having the ring wear, uh, but still really great. Here's something a bit more recent. This is one of my favorite records from last year. It's Thundercats, it is what it is. One of the most renowned bassists of our modern times, and his mainstream records are, more often than not, quality jazz fusion. Fucking Dragon Ball Do Rag is one of the one of my favorite tracks from last year, but the title track, it is what it is, especially that whole second half being just a great, great tribute to the late Mac Miller, who he was friends with. And it just flows so well. Like, you can argue that the production isn't that great. I think it's just a great, chill record to listen to. Funky in some parts, but it's just so nice. So nice. I really love this guy. Oh, hell yeah. Another guy I love. Thomas Dolby with the Golden Age of Wireless. Uh, this was his first record. It has the uh, She Blinded Me with Science song. is most well-known. Uh, but the whole record is just an excellent synth-pop new wave record. I had originally listened to this on streaming, and it had all the songs on here and the two additional ones that were specific to the U.S. release, She Blind Me With Science and One of Our Submarines. Uh, but when searching for the best possible vinyl version I could get, it I just couldn't find a copy that had all of the songs on there. So the the best compromise I had was the U.S. version, uh, which had both of those tracks, but was missing, I believe it was Fairfield Channel or Fair Channel F or something like that. It was a very nice little instrumental track that um, I guess I wouldn't have minded if it was replaced with the other songs, but would have still really liked it on here. I also think the sequencing here is a, a bit weird as well. I much prefer the U.K. version. Um, and I believe the, there's one track on here, Radio Silence. They had a whole new version for the initial pressing of this in the US. But this is, I found out, is a reissue that just put the original version of that song back onto here. But yeah, great collection of tracks. Europa and the Pirate Twins, uh, Airwaves, Commercial Breakup. The second album I'd really like to get to. And then we got uh, probably one of my favorite recent ones and one of the pricier ones I've had to get. Uh, let me see if I can pronounce this correctly. Taiko Onuki with Sun Shower. So I have a big affinity with the city pop genre as a fair amount of people on the internet have over the past few years. And I have a few city pop collections that I'll show off a few a bit later. On one of those collections was a track from this album. And I checked out the whole album here because I love that one so much. And this is a fucking great ass record. This is so, so good. There's elements of jazz, elements of jazz, pop, a bit of R&B, even a little bit of ambient towards the back end. And some wonderful orchestral elements as well. God, it's just so bright and sunny and beautiful. And I later came to find out that 
Uh, two of the members of the Yellow Magic Orchestra had worked on this album. And there's even American who plays the drums on here, one of the more well-known uh, session players for drums during that time. God, just the more that I learn about this record, the more that I just fall in love with it. And Silent Screamer, Summer Connection, pricey because I believe I this was an this again this was an import because uh, that's most of the time the only way they can get a lot of these kinds of records. It's definitely one of the best imports that I've had to get. It just just really love this record um, so much. I'd like to see them just keep reissuing these albums here in the U.S., especially with the continuing rise in popularity of the city pop era of that time. And here's the album that I got with A Tribe Called Quest and Best Buy, uh, System of the Downs, Toxicity. So you know new Metal, right? A lot of new Metal isn't that great. Honestly, I've never really gotten into the genre, but this is definitely one of the best records from that era. Like, all the singles here, Aerials, Chop Suey, and the, the title track, they're all great, but then we got a bunch of other... And we got a bunch of other fucking excellent songs on here. Fucking Prison Song, Bounce, Science is probably one of my favorites, like right under Aerials. And just so much of the stuff on here is just aged so well in terms of political commentary and song topics. I know some of the members probably don't follow those kinds of politics, but um, still just a fucking great record. And again, flows really well. What also flows very well is Suzanne Vega with Solitude Standing. This was her most popular album and contained like her hit song Luca as well as the title track. Oh, and the original version of Tom's Diner, <laughs> the acapella version, not the uh, DNA remix that became a hit, which I also really love. Released during the time in the late 80s when singer-songwriters had started becoming popular again. Got this, Tracy Chapman. Eddie Bricknell, which uh, I have one of her records as well. Unfortunately, this one does skip quite a bit during Solitude Standing, which uh, I've come to really love that track, so it is very unfortunate that it just kept skipping during that song. So at some point I'd like to get another copy of this, but this will definitely do for now. And we got probably one of my favorites from my childhood, Sting with Dream of the Blue Turtles. This was his first solo record after he left the police in the mid-80s, and <laughs> you want to talk self-indulgence, you got this guy right here. But there's a lot of great fun to be had with that self-indulgence. Great rock on here, some great pop, some really weird commentary on the whole Russian scare, the Cold War. So I believe my favorite on here has got to be children's crusade or fortress around your heart his later albums are really good too i'd like to get nothing like the sun that was his next one after this that had also had a, some really great stuff on there and i think brand new day is probably the other one that i'd like to get on vinyl but i'm very satisfied with this for now okay this one's gonna be a bit tricky as the next six i have here all belong to one of the greatest rock groups of the 70s, in my opinion, and one that I also grew up with, motherfucking Steely Dan. So many great tracks throughout their career, and all started here with their first album, Can't Buy a Thrill. Even with this, they had already found their unique footing with their combination of jazz, pop, and jazz rock, and so many groovy, groovy tracks on here. Reeling in the Years, Do It Again, Brooklyn Owes the Charmer Under Me, Turn That Heartbeat Over Again. What a great record to start out with. And this is a very well-maintained version of that too. It might be a reissue, but again, look at this, look at this album cover, man. This is probably one of their best. Then we got their next one, Countdown to Ecstasy, which I want to say this might be my favorite one. But yeah, this is not one of their most successful, but definitely one of their most well-regarded. Yeah, Bodhisattva, Your Gold Teeth, My Old School, Showbiz Kids, fucking King of the World, man. That's, God, that's one of my favorite tracks from them. And that cover is a bit more minimalist than the previous one, but still love it. So stupid and abstract. 
Now, unfortunately, I don't have their next two, Pretzel Logic or Katie Lied, on vinyl yet, but I am planning to at some point in time. So we're going to skip right ahead to the Royal Scam, which, again, tied with Countdown to Ecstasy may be my favorite record of theirs. This one just is the culmination of their early period. It's the wonderful mix of jazz rock they have been cultivating up to this point, and I believe that it peaked here. Even though their next album is what many people say is where it actually peaked. Another great collection of tracks though, Kit Charlemagne, Don't Take Me Alive, uh, Green Earrings this is one of their best kind of jam songs, I, I would call it that at least. Haitian Divorce, Everything You Did, The Royal Scam, title track. Another fucking wonderful cover. Just look at this. Look at this. Fucking creepy as hell. It's just so bizarre. And then we got Asia, their most celebrated record, I believe. And one of their most successful, if not their most successful. And God, I don't to see why. This is also a great, great record. I believe this is the first one that I listened to. And so many great, so many great songs on here as well. Title track, just eight minutes of perfection. There's like one or two here that I'm not too fond of, which is why it's under Royal Scam and Countdown to Ecstasy. But you got fucking Peg, Deacon Blues, Black Cow, Josie. It cannot go wrong with Steely Dan. Even with their last, last album from this era, Gaucho. I actually may have lied, this might have been the first one that I'd listened to. And even to this day, it's quite mixed among fans and and critics and people in the music community. Uh, because compared to just the rest of their output, it is so much stiffer and controlled. Uh, the groove isn't quite there, some people would argue as well, but I don't give a shit. There's fucking Babylon Sisters. The title track, Gaucho, Time Out of Mind, My Rival, Third World Man, so, so good. Even though I have also kind of grown a bit colder over time on this record, like Hey 19, I honestly think that's one of their worst songs. Which kind of baffles how it became one of their most popular singles as well, but it's public. But this one particularly just holds a special place in my heart because this was the first record that I'd gotten that's kickstarted this whole collection. It's found it in an antique store, just sitting there. Place great, plays beautifully. And again, another great cover. Another fucking great cover. So yeah, if you've not listened to Steely Dan, I highly recommend that you do. Like, all their albums are worthwhile, even their later stuff. Now, if you've gotten a bit tired of the real music that I've been showing off here, as people call it, I do have two game soundtracks that I picked up recently. We got the Sonic Adventure 1 and Sonic Adventure 2 vinyls. I would love to get a bunch of game soundtracks on vinyl whenever they're available. More often than not, they're not quite up to snuff as the full soundtracks, but I'll make an exception for these two because like, even outside of the games, it's just a fucking great collection of rock and pop electronic music. A couple of hip hop tracks here and there, and in SA2's case, some great jazz instrumentation. Or hell, even the that's even the case of one uh, with uh, fucking My Sweet Passion, which was recorded in America by a bunch of well-known musicians. You had fucking Mike Chapman from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers on guitar there. It's fucking insane. But anyway, uh, these collections are pretty good, but I prefer SA1's vinyl to SA2's. It has a better collection of tracks, better sequencing as well. SA2 just has all of Shadow and some of the end boss music, which I just have never really cared for. Not enough of Rouge's stuff. They don't have Dry Lagoon. Why do you not have Dry Lagoon? That's one of, if not the best song on the entire thing. Also, they have Open Your Heart, the title track, as the last one on here, as appropriate. And Live and Learn is the last track on the A side. It's just. Why? And the mix, is on, the mix is on here are very weird too, but it's just nice to have these on vinyl. I believe these are sadly the only game soundtracks that I do have on vinyl. Hoping to get more in the future whenever they learn how to put in all the good songs and sequence them correctly. Two of Solange's records, Solange Knowles, 
Sister of Beyonce, two of the best R&B albums of the decade. See at the Table, great, great stuff. Cranes in the Sky is one of my favorite songs of all time. And When I Get Home, a lot of really, 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 really nice, smooth R&B. Flows a lot better, too, honestly. I, I will say that, it just, I love the flow here. And we got fucking Almeida, Down With The Click, Stay Flow. So many great stuff here. So much great stuff here, man. And uh, the and the records here say nice, nice red, clear red. In the case of See the Table, at least. Looks really cool. And in the case of When I Get Home, it is just a nice clear white. I just love the, I just love when they do this for a lot of modern records or even the reissues. It just looks so nice and clear. I don't think I've shown off uh, a fair amount of them because a lot of the old records just did not have those options, but a lot of the new records do. Next one we got Sade This Far, which is a collection of all of this band's records from when they had started to their most recent one, I guess in preparation of a new one, whenever that comes out, who knows, but Sade, classic, R&B, soul, sophisticated. In my opinion, their discography is flawless, and it all started out with their first record, 1984's Diamond Life. Uh, not quite one of my favorites, but does have a lot of my favorite tracks on here. Smooth Operator, You Love Is King, Hang On To Your Love, Cherry Pie, Sally, and the last one on here, the uh, Why Can't We Live Together cover. So great. So many great songs. And then their next record, Promise, released the year after. is more or less an extension of what they were doing on that record, but I think it's a little bit better, a little bit um, more dramatic as well. You got Is It a Crime, The Sweetest Taboo, Never As Good As The First Time, and then fucking Tar Baby, which was one of the many tracks that was on that Vaporwave record that everyone loved uh, back in the early 2010s. I forget what the hell it was called. But that song was sampled for that album, so you would likely know it if you're into Vaporwave. Then we got Maureen, another fucking great one. Uh, so many great records on here. So many great songs. And then we have their next one, Stronger Than Pride, which I actually have two copies of, because I had gotten this one uh, before I had gotten the whole collection. Maybe not their best one, but still a lot of very quality tracks, like got the singles, Love is, the Love is Stronger Than Pride, Paradise, one of their best singles, Nothing Can Come Between Us, Keep Looking, feels just maybe a bit stiffer than the first two records they had, but I think that they're still doing a lot of really great stuff here. Highly recommended regardless. And then we come to probably my favorite record of theirs, Love Deluxe. Like I listened to this the whole thing just the other day and it is just so amazing. This is when uh, they had started experimenting with like trip hop and even a bit of ambient music here and there. But they still had plenty of just very good R&B soul songs on here to fill those gaps. No Ordinary Love, again, one of my favorite songs ever and one of their best songs. Kiss of Life, Bulletproof Soul, Cherish the Day. Fucking God, just, this band's got, again, it's fucking amazing how many home runs these bands were hitting back in the day. And then we come to their last two, which I'm not quite as fond of, but they're still quality. Um, Lovers Rock, their Turn of the Millennium album, released in 2000, and you can definitely tell, has a lot of the characteristics of R&B at that time, but still sounds really good, and it's still definitely Sade's take on that era of R&B, I guess you could call it. Yep, By Your Side, fucking King of Sorrow, it was a fucking excellent track. Somebody already broke my heart, it's great, great stuff. Again, not one of their best, but still worthwhile. Also not one of their best, but also still worthwhile. Their most recent record, Soldier of Love. You can definitely tell, like, this is the point where they really don't have to make records anymore. They are just have been so successful as Set for Life. Uh, but they still just sometimes on occasion just crack out these records. This is only their sixth record in, like, 25, 26 years during their career when this came out. 
got fucking Soldier of Love, one of their more popular songs. And that still amazes me because it's just, again, they're kind of going back to the trip hop from Love Deluxe. And it's just so intense. It just sounds so great. And Baby Father. Um, then we got Bring Me Home in Another Time. Man, some of the tracks on here, again, not too fond of. I never really cared for The Moon in the Sky, but it's still great. Like, it's one of the most solid discographies that any band has ever put out. And I cannot wait to see what they do in 2030, or where, whenever the hell their next album's gonna be. Uh, we're getting close to being done with the bottom shelf because we have another band's discography to deal with. Not a full one, but still plenty. And that band, of course, would be Rush. I had gotten into these guys in college, like my later years of college. I had not listened to their albums, though. After college, I finally did, and man, these guys were on fire back in the day. They were on fire. Uh, even their earlier records, like this one, Fly By Night, is absolutely worthwhile. It is so, so great. Like, they kind of started out as like a bit of a Led Zeppelin ripoff, uh, but they, even with this, they had immediately grown into a more progressive rock, which still had those kind of bluesy uh, hard rock elements in them, but that's kind of what made them unique as well. Especially with this, this was like the first sign that they went in that direction and could be successful there. You got Anthem, Bitor and the Snow Dog, one of my favorite tracks of theirs, and the title track, Fly By Night. So great. So, so great. Now, sadly, I don't have 2112, which was the record that pretty much had launched their career, more or less, uh, made them the Canadian progressive rock kings, uh, if you want to call them that. Uh, but I do have the next record after that, because at that point they could just pretty much do whatever the hell they wanted. And this is A Farewell to Kings. I wasn't that into this one when I first listened to it, but there's a track on here, Xanadu, which just listening to it over and over again, one of their best long-form tracks, and it just was more than enough to get me to listen to the rest of the album in closer detail, and it all just sounds so great. Especially in the last one, fucking Cygnus Cygnus X1 and Madrigal. I can't. I can't forget Madrigal. Everyone. A lot of people. A lot of people love that one. But the one I love more, and maybe in fact my favorite of theirs, uh, the next one after that, Hemispheres. When I listened to this one, it just imme it just hit me immediately how great this was with Cygnus X1 Book Two, <laughs> Hemispheres. And the rest of the tracks are great too. Like Circumstances, the trees, and La Via Strangiago. Sadly, this one is one of those kind of stupid picture discs um which it just has the album cover on the disc itself which I, I i guess that's fine but i would much prefer to have the original cover without this obscuring it's kind of already an awkward at an awkward angle so yeah i'd like to get an original copy of this or a reissue that does not have this picture disc quality but it is still a great great ass record one of my favorite records of theirs and then we have the next one that they released after that, where they started going into just kind of more simpler, more a bit more mainstream uh, prog rock, but still really good stuff. Uh, Permanent Waves, Spirit of Radio, Jacob's Ladder, Natural Science, one of my favorite tracks of theirs. There's just something about that 1980, late 70s, early 80s production that's just so appealing to me. I just love the way the drums and the guitar sound and the bass Still great as ever. God, so good. And then we got what is probably their most popular album next to 2112, Moving Pictures. Uh, this is probably my favorite right under Hemispheres. Another great selection of tracks, Tom Sawyer, Limelight, which I believe was one of the first songs I had listened to from them. And the instrumental, YYZ, and then Vital Signs. God, I love Vital Signs. They were really experimenting with a lot of the reggae stuff as well during that time. It just all sounds so good. And the most recent one I have of theirs is the next album after that, Signals. Uh, not quite one of my favorites, but does have some of my favorite tracks on here. Subdivisions, New World Man, Digital Man. I listened to Digital Man so much when I was going through all their albums. And Countdown. Uh, I really love Countdown too. This is definitely the point in their career where they were going towards more synth territory and 
this is like the transition from their early 80s and late 70s stuff to that. Because the next one you had Grace Under Pressure, which I did not care for at first, but I eventually liked. I, there was a copy of that in the vinyl store that I went to that I, I, I wanted to get, but I just restrained myself from doing. And then when I went there again, it, it was gone. Because yeah, Rush is really popular, especially their vinyls. So it's not there. It's going to be snatched up with them in the next few days. So you better get it while it's there. So yeah, Rush is a great rock group. Maybe their later records aren't that great, but still it's just a lot of quality stuff. And the last one that was on the bottom shelf here, pick this up, that same record store, Rick James, Street Songs, his most popular album, I believe. It's the one that has Give It To Me Baby and Super Freak, Super Freak. Some quality stuff on here. You got Mr. Policeman, Make Love To Me. Excellent, excellent R&B. Like he's a complete legend, even though he's also a bit of a creep. Okay, that is one shelf down. We've got the next shelf to go to. Uh, got a little bit of cleanup to do, so let's do a cool transition. Up. R E R.E.M., one of the classic alternative rock bands. A few of their albums, their first one, Murmur, it's regarded as an all-time alt-rock classic. So good that this thing was probably played a bajillion times, which is the only explanation I have for why it skips so much. If you ever go vinyl hunting, you're likely going to encounter that a lot when going to used stores, just buying records that look good, but when you put them on the player, they just... It's annoying, especially with this fucking record. However, their next one, which I do have, Reckoning, uh, plays just fine. I believe this is a newer copy, and I like this one a bit more than Murmur. I actually wasn't that into it at first when going through it, uh, going through their discography, uh, but I have come around on it. I think it's a much more focused version of what they were trying to do on the first album and their unique sound and the direction finally took hold. Not that it wasn't there on the first album, but it just feels like it's more together here. Like on the last one you had Radio Free Europe and 9-9, I believe that's what it was called. Here you, you, you have fucking Pretty Persuasion. Every single song on here is so great and its back cover is also really cool. It's great, great ass, great ass, great ass. Fucking hell, I don't want to break it. But I may love almost as much their next album, which uh, escapes my memory. Fables of the Reconstruction. Uh, this is, I don't want to call it experimental, but it sounds a lot different from their first two. They're implementing more strings and some more oddball rhythm. And the mix sounds a lot muddier than their first two as well. It's not quite as clean but that's what kind of gives it its appeal. And just another fucking wonderful, great batch of songs on here. Uh, oh God. Killing Gravity's Pull, Driver 8, Get There From Here, Wendell Lee, Old Man Kenzie. But definitely like to get more REM albums, because sadly the last one that I have, uh, we're skipping their next record after that, uh, although I do want that one as well at some point, uh, Document. This is the one that arguably got them into the mainstream. And it is the one that got them into the mainstream. This one had The One I Love and End of the World and I Feel Fine. And of course, the first track to kick it all off, find the Finest Work song. I heard this while I was at one of my college jobs on the radio, just pop up all of a sudden. It was just the fucking hardest shit, man. Like, I'm pretty sure they've gone harder a couple times, especially on this album, but God, it just sounded so raw and powerful. Despite this being the one that got in the mainstream, like, it's no wonder, and it's just as good as their earlier albums as well. So yeah, R.E.M., great-ass band. If you're looking for some really good alternative rock and you somehow haven't heard them, come on, man. This is for you Spyro fans out there. The Police with Zenyatta Mandata. 
I didn't pronounce that correctly, I'm 90% sure. Having listened to all of their records, this is easily my favorite of theirs. Again, that period of time when post-punk and new wave were the popular forms of music, of rock music, just a great era of so many great albums and bands and songs. This is also one of them. Their other albums are really, really good, but again, this one is probably my favorite of theirs. It has Don't Stand So Close To Me, Do, 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 Da, 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 as well as the original version of Shadows In The Rain. Again, like the sequencing here, the flow, especially on the first half, is so, so good. Oh God, Canary In A Coal Mine. I listened to that tracks like a couple years ago. It was like one of my most listened songs on Spotify that year. Oh geez, so catchy. Elements of, and of course, elements of reggae as well. Like a lot of bands around this time were doing that too. Like fucking Bob Marley's popularity had peaked at this point because he died. But like that was kind of just the culmination. That was kind of like the culmination of like that in the mainstream. Although it still has continued to this day because of reggaeton and whatever. But in regards to rock music, like this. This and Rush, of course, they were also incorporating that into their music as well. Just a great era of music, man. It's all about the music, man. Peter Gabriel with So. This was his most popular album uh, and has like all of his hits. Sledgehammer, Big Time, fucking that Don't Give Up duet with Kate Bush. Fucking gorgeous. Probably my favorite track on here has got to be Mercy Street. Just sometimes some songs just leave you speechless. Oh, and how, of course, how can I forget In Your Eyes? Uh, I better not forget that. It just feels like the best mix of his, just the influences that he was gathering throughout his career during the 80s, especially. It's the, the African tribal I, world influences, uh, world beat. The felt like the best commercial approach to that, which is why this got so popular in the first place. His other albums are as worthwhile, because like Shock the Monkey, Games Without Frontiers, and of course Salisbury Hill, and fucking Here Comes the Flood. Yeah, great man, great musician. Uh, even though his career kind of petered out in the 90s, he was still providing some solid entertainment. Fucking steam, man. <laughs> Even Pro Jam, first album. Jeremy. Even Flow. They're one of one of the one of the bands that broke grunge into the mainstream during the early 90s. It's that hard rock approach to grunge that just made them unique. Fucking excellent first album. I have tried to get into their other ones, and outside of a couple songs, it's just not quite doing it for me. But I'm definitely happy to have this one here. Especially because I think this was unopened and new. And it's... and it just looks wonderful. Alright, so here are those compilations I was talking about earlier. Pacific Breeze, Volume 1 and Volume 2. So these are two collections of city pop music that came out thanks to the Good people at Light in the Attic Records, who have been doing a fantastic job bringing over music of this kind and several other kind uh, over to the States, mainly for vinyl purchases and collectors. Both of these albums have just a solid, solid collection of city pop tracks. Going through these songs will likely have you going down a rabbit hole of this era of music. Like, this is how I discovered the Sun Shower album. The music from the solo careers of the members of Yellow Magic Orchestra, as well as LA Knight, which is probably one of my favorite tracks of all time now. <laughs> I'm talking about the first collection mainly here. Second collection is definitely worthwhile, has a lot of really good songs. Not quite as strong, but Regardless, I really hope they make a third collection at some point in time because uh, they have knocked it out of the park with both of these even though they don't have like the very popular city pop songs, you know, Plastic Love and that one guy uh, The album's called For You, but I forget what the name Tatsuaro, but I imagine the the licensing fees for those songs are very expensive Especially because they are like the most popular of city pop. Um, but that would definitely be nice for the next collection if there is a next collection. Also, these guys have like a ton of other really good uh, old, not forgotten, but obscure music from way back in the day of all kinds of genres. They're definitely worth checking out. 
Also, one more time. Look at these covers. These are fucking gorgeous. Uh, this was a recent pickup. Uh, Patrice Russian's Straight From The Heart. I had listened to this earlier this year um, because it had contained one of my favorite songs of all time, Forget Me Nots. That bass line, oh, that groove is hypnotic. But then I find, I, but finally, after fucking seven, eight years after discovering that song, I listened to the full album, and it's just as great. Like I've listened to a couple other songs from this artist. Uh, How haven't you heard? It's another really good one. Uh, but from what I have listened to, this is definitely the best one from their popular peak. You could easily, call, you could probably call them a one-hit wonder, but I like, think they have too many notable songs in here, like. Remind Me, and Number One, the instrumental, which is apparently a, a a workout theme, I assume, back in the 80s. I had not seen any references to it, but I don't doubt that it's definitely on there. I Was Tired of Being Alone, All We Need. It was a great R&B record. A couple hints of jazz here and there, because she was originally a jazz musician. Great piano player, I should say, too. It's You and I. Aquemina. What can be said about Outkast, one of the most celebrated hip-hop duos of the 90s and early 2000s? You could arguably say all their records are really good. Uh, this is the one that I just happened to find on Amazon one day. Uh, sad to see this is a, one of those reissue ones that just packs three vinyls into this glossy and cheap cover, but to have it on vinyl is really all I care about, and this is a great goddamn album. It's a great album. Fucking, again, Aquemini, Rosa Parks, Spotty Adi Dopalicious, so much good stuff. Fucking great mix of Southern, jazz, classic, classic stuff here. Another 90s legend here. I had mentioned grunge, so you're probably expecting this to show up at any point. Nirvana's Nevermind, their breakout record, good fucking shit. I want in utero much more, but this will definitely do for now. Oh, I really like this one. Uh, New Radicals with uh, Maybe You've Been Brainwashed too. It took me a little bit to get into this fully, but this is a fantastic album. Pop rock, alternative rock, late 90s. Their only one, like As You Get What You Give On It, but a bunch of other really good songs too. Someday We'll Know, Mother We Just Can't Get Enough. Jehovah made this whole joint for you. I can't. I can't remember. If this was a reissue. Um, I think it was, but this is probably the gatefold cover that they had originally released. But um, yeah, worthwhile purchase. You see, sometimes I just don't want to take these things out because they're a pain in the ass to take back in, put back in. Oh, this is probably the most recent of recent purchases. It's in the airplane over the sea by Neutral Milk Hotel. Uh, another fucking late 90s classic, probably even more so than the other one. Uh, one of the greatest indie rock records of all time. It has maintained its status to this day. Everyone on the fucking internet has heard this. Like, even my buddy, who's not really that much into past music or older music, loves this record. Loves all of the songs on here. Because they're all great. And, again, this also came on Amazon, but thankfully it's, uh, the gatefold and it actually looks really cool. Put that back there with the marching marching little fellows on there, it's really nice. When you were young and you were the king of carrot flowers in the airplane over the sea. Oh comely, that fucking eight minute epic I did in one take. It's fucking insane. Yeah, really good shit. <sighs> okay, so this might be a bit hard to read. Uh, this is N-E-R-D's, or nerds, no one ever really dies. Get it, because... This was my favorite album of 2017, and it released late into the year, but I listened to this thing endlessly. Endlessly. And it's a fucking shame that they went for this stupid, simple approach to the vinyl. Perhaps that is the point, but there is really nothing to show here. It's just a double LP, with a really simple black cover, and I just I just don't get it. Like, here's the actual album art. I can't really imagine why they just went for this, especially when the CD, I think, also just has this cover as well. But, I don't know, kind of lazy 
Yeah, I appreciate the marking on the center. Looks like it was like handwritten, but it could have been a lot better. Still a really, really good record, though. As well as uh, a bunch of other of Nerd's music as well. I'd really like to get their first record on vinyl. Okay. Going back to the prog rock thing, uh, we got two Moody Blues albums. I've not listened to these a whole lot. Um, this one I got from one of my relatives, who's a big, big prog rock fan. They grew up during that era. And this other one I just got because this one was pretty good from what I had listened to it. This is Days of Future Past, which is kind of what got them popularity in America over here. Night in white satin. Uh, the pressing is not aged particularly well. It's a very, very old record, um, but it still does sound pretty good to this day. It's still listenable at least. And this one, God, I need to listen to it a couple more times. This was On the Threshold of a Dream. I've only listened to this thing once, um, but uh, it does sound a lot better than the other copy or the other album that I have of theirs. Uh, so I should probably give it a couple more tries. It is a very good record though. I always really like to dive further into all those bands in the late 60s, early 70s that were cropping up around the time. This is another recent pickup, uh, Mini Rippertons. Perfect Angel. This is a great R&B and funk record, man. I went through her whole discography a couple months ago and like this and the album that came after it were like the best ones that she had, but this one in particular is so, so good. The kickoff song that reasons and just her fucking wailing is so balling. And you got fucking Stevie Wonder on the drums there. I did not know that, <laughs> I did not know the man could drum, but he couldn't drum. And of course it has Loving You, which was her biggest hit on here, but it also has just so many other great songs too. And yeah. Okay, this one here was the second vinyl that I picked up when I started my collection right after Gaucho. Midnight Star, Planetary Invasion. Um, this and No Parking on the Dance Floor, their previous one, uh, were their most popular. And this has fucking Operator and one of like one of their best well-known songs as well, Curious. This has been sampled so many times throughout music and rap careers. Like, I had not listened to this when I first picked it up, and straight away, the first fucking song, that Body Snatchers, oh, that, that is, that is fucking gold. It's fucking gold, man. It sounded great. I think Scientific Love is another song in here. Yeah, really good stuff. And they're from Ohio. Gotta rip the good boys. So the next segment's gonna take a couple minutes, because I have seven or eight uh, records of this guy's music in my possession, and that, of course, would be the one and only Michael Franks. You've likely never heard of this dude, ever. Uh, even back in the day, I don't think anyone had ever heard of him, but he's a smooth jazz musician and singer that came out of the mid-70s and was never really popular, per se, but he is so so many albums in his catalog and has changed his style so many times like evolved over the years and it's just some really really nice and smooth jazz with elements of r&b funk it's just a lot of great playing great songwriting great production and all started here with the art of t which is easily one of his best one of his more foreboding but also very playful and fun night moves Monkey See, Monkey Do, St. Elmo's Fire. Uh, his stuff has been sampled a couple times, so if you know your if you know your hip hop, you might have heard uh, some of his stuff being sampled over the years. But yeah, this first record really great, and then we got his follow up here, which uh, has this gorgeous little cover, gorgeous orange, Sleeping Gypsy. For this one, he introduced more lush instrumentation through the strings and minimal horns. But also a couple of really basic tracks with just piano and a couple of like a couple of saxophone here and there. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous album. This is probably my second favorite of his. The Lady Wants to Know. I really hope it's you. Eye of the Storm. 
Don't be boo. That's great stuff, man. And then we have his follow-up record, which goes back into that more playful territory. It's Birchfield Nines. Uh, this is probably like more jazzy, like more standard jazzy than uh, his other albums have been so far, like especially on the back end. Uh, these song titles sound quite silly, but they are definitely worthwhile. When the cookie jar is empty. A Robin song, Wrestle a Live Nude Girl. In Search of the Perfect Shampoo. Dear Little Nightingale. Again, it sounds really, really dumb, and the songs are just as dumb, but if you're into that kind of stuff, definitely recommended. Not quite as good as his last two, but still really, really nice. And then he just kind of went full Brazilian jazz with uh, his next release, Tiger in the Rain. This is probably his weakest out of his early material, despite the title track, Tiger in the Rain, being probably one of my favorite tracks of his. But if you like your Brazilian jazz, like your Pat Metheny and Weather Report, it's really good shit. Senpaku, Hideaway, Jardin Basinto. And then his next release uh, kind of uh, went back into a much simpler direction, a little bit more rock oriented, with One Bad Habit. Definitely a step up from Tiger in the Rain, but I think he has definitely made better material than what's on here. Still really good material. You got the first track, which goes back into the goofy songwriting territory. It's called Baseball and just has all these baseball sex references. It's really silly and dumb. That's what makes him great. And Lotus Blossom, which is one of his most gorgeous tracks. And On My Way Home To You, did I say rock? I think I meant soul, because that track is soulful as sin. And then he started implementing more electronic mu music or elements, I should say. Not full, although he would go full, uh, but uh, oh yeah. Um, this is Objects of Desire. Now, I'd actually not listened to this fully until recently. I had heard a couple of the songs on here, but not the full album. And again, not my favorite of his, but still a lot of really good tracks. Tahitian Moon, Love Duet, Wonderland. That is slowly becoming one of my favorite tracks from his. It's just so, so good. It's a nice, fun, immediate, probably one of his more romantic ones, too. But perhaps even more romantic is the last album of his that I have here, uh, Passion Fruit. This is my favorite. <laughs> Uh, I know I was just saying, oh, it's not good, as good as early material, but this, this is just, I don't want to call it a classic, because again, no one has heard of this guy. And figuratively, I mean, no, like, all the songs on here are great. Like, every single one of them, even the goofier ones, like, now that your joystick is broke. If you want to hear him going full electronic, it's definitely that one. But, uh, first track, from that snare drum intro, Alone, Alone at Night, and, like, Probably the most well-known track from here, When Sly Calls, Don't Touch That Phone. Man, I listened to that so much back in the day, so fucking much. And this is where, like, his Brazilian influences started creeping back in, and it all just comes together to create a, another gloriously crafted album. And again, my favorite of his. His other stuff I really do like as well, but I'm not, like, jumping on the gun to get them just yet. Maybe Skin Dive and the Camera Never Lies. I will be patient because I'm good with what I have right now. I'm also running out of room. All right, next up, uh, Men at Work. Business as usual. I love Men at Work. I love their all their songs, all their albums. The three that they had. <laughs> Actually, I haven't listened to the last one fully, but their second one's really good too. But this is the first one. I am a little bit disappointed that this did not come with the original yellow cover with this that's on all the other editions, but when the songs in here are the, this good, then I can't really complain. Who can it be now? Down Under. And again, even in Australia, the new wave rock stuff that was going on there in the early 80s and late 70s sounded so great, especially on here. Be Good Johnny, Touching the Untouchables, Catch a Star, Down by the Sea, Helpless Automation, every single track, it's fucking fantastic. Okay, so this is also another bit of an odd one out. Uh, this is Malibu Ken, the self-titled release of the duo Malibu Ken, which features rapper Aesop Rock, like one of the most prolific 
indie rappers of all time, and electronic musician, producer, Tobacco. This came out in early 2019 and was one of my favorite records of that year, so of course I had to get it. It is a weird mix of a scuzzy, fuzzy, grimy electronic beats with Aesop Rock spitting fucking bars of his weird nonsensical diatribes and stories, as he is apt to do, because uh, this is actually my first exposure to his music, as well as Tobacco's, but I didn't get into Tobacco just yet. Uh, but Aesop Rock, though, this like led me down the path to his wonderful discography, of which we will dis be displaying a bit later on. It does not waste any of your time, and if you're looking for some really weird, weird shit that's not not too out there, but still kind of weird enough to make you feel a little cool and different from other people, uh, this is definitely one of them to go with. And this album cover, man, is great. Also, what's even better is when you open it up inside, it is disgusting! Yay! Okay, so this this time I will get it right. Everybody's working for the weekend. Of course, it's Loverboy with Get Lucky. Get Lucky. I'm not a big Loverboy fan, but this album is wonderful. And Working for the Weekend is another one of my favorite tracks of all time. Lucky Ones on here as well is fucking fantastic. That drum breakdown at the end is great. Some of the songs on here aren't that great, but still, like, this is a really good album cover. I, I just had to get it for this alone. Uh, this is another really strange one. Uh, this is The Knitters. Oh my god, I'm getting flashbacks to that one. Knitters. I was in the vinyl store that I usually go to and just saw this lying there. I thought the cover was really cool and just picked it up. I had no idea what this was. I had a feeling it was like 80s, late 80s, alternative something. Um, and little did I know that's pretty much what it was, but it was like an alternative country record. A bunch of bluegrass and roots rock elements. And it was surprisingly, and it was surprisingly fun record. I had later learned that this was like an offshoot of a punk band called X whose material I have not heard, but the genre of music that this has been labeled as, uh, from my research, is called cowpunk. So like, I guess country punk, I, I can kind of feel like a bit of the punk influence here, but I don't know, it just kind of sounded just very old-fashioned and blue, gr blue grassy to me. Still a really good listen. Okay, back to the people who are not unknown. Kendrick, Kendrick, Kendrick. One of the best rappers of our time. Three top-notch hip-hop records. Yes, even damn. Fucking great shit, just look it up, man. Just... Oh, this is one of my absolute favorites. This Kate Bush, it's Never Forever. From what I've listened to, like, even more than fucking Hounds of Love. And I really, really love Hounds of Love as well. I fortunately don't have it, as you can probably tell, but I just saw this and had to pick it up. Like, it was just immediate. I love this record so much. Fucking Babushka. D-E-S. Blow Away. Breathing. Excellent closer. So powerful. So heavy. Very, very heavy. And even Army Dreamers, the, the, with the fake string instruments. This fucking weird instrumentation just covering the very, very, very dark song. Great, 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 great. Love me some Kate Bush. Okay, this here, we've got Josie Cotton with Convertible Music. If you know any of the songs that are on here, it's probably the, you know, you know the one. Johnny, are you queer boy? But yeah, kind of a one-hit wonder, I suppose, but this is a solid new wave, um, early power pop record. Oh, I didn't know that. Hmm. Fucking advertising the uh, heavy metal soundtrack on here. Huh. Curious. But yeah, kind of a one-hit wonder, I suppose, but this is a solid new wave um, early power pop record. I've only listened to it once, and I think it's because it's skipped a lot, so uh, maybe just give it another listen on streaming just to see if it'd be worth it to track down another copy. Uh, it's a fun little cover, though. Convertible music. 
All right, on here we got the angry English boy that y'all know and love, Joe Jackson, with his first record, Get Sharp. Look Sharp. It's Look Sharp. Get Sharp. Look Sharp. Fucking is she really going out with him? And all the other songs in here. Again, great post-punk, new wave, power pop shit. It's so, so good. And his next record after that, um, I'm the Man, which has a track here, I mean, another one of the singles, Different for Girls, slowly becoming one of my favorite songs of all time. That fucking progression in the chorus is just killer to me. But a bunch, uh, but a bunch of other really good stuff on here too. Like, Jess is Worthwhile is the first one, and probably a better, better cover as well. But then we skip this third album, because I've not heard it yet, to his fourth one, uh, which is a lot more eclectic, and definitely where he was incorporating a lot more electronic music and more genres as well, especially in the first half, and trying to mature his songwriting, I suppose. Night and Day has his biggest hit on here, Stepping Out, as well as Breaking Us In Two, which are two of my favorite songs of all time. Actually, Stepping Out is my favorite song of all time. It has been for, for the longest time, and nothing has changed it. It is such a rush of emotion and calming, calming, soothing. It's that simple, dinky electronic beats. It's so, so good. Okay, and then another band I only have three albums worth of, uh, Jethro Tall. Another classic, classic progressive rock group. This is their first album that I've gotten into, is Aqualung. Can't really say anything about these guys, or this guy, I should say, Ian Anderson, uh, that I haven't said already. So, so fucking great. Like, title track, and then Mother Goose, My God, him 43 which was on fucking rock band for some reason why i weird single choice locomotive breath though was also really fucking great probably even better and what has become probably one of my favorite records thick as a brick this is a just a wonderful glorious continuous piece of prog rock that sounds so much fun it is just goes in all sorts of really great and wacky directions. And this cover here has just so much going on. It is, I just love the idea that they're going for here. And there's even more in the gatefold. I think this is my most listened album from last year, uh, just because it's so great. And then, um, that war, uh, war Child. Uh, this had Bungle in the Jungle, which uh, was a great, great single. Uh, the rest of the tracks are kind of, eh, they're, they're still pretty good though. It's definitely a worthwhile album. I just need to listen to it more to re really get into it. But I'm definitely glad I have it here. I like the negative, the inverted image uh, here that they're going with. Definitely kind of strays away from their progressive rock. It goes for like very simple, basic song structures and such, but still really, really cool. And to finally finish off the third shelf, we have Janet Jackson with Control. Classic mid-80s R&B record. So many great songs. So many great songs. The title track, When I Think of You, Nasty, Pleasure Principle, Let's, let's Wait a While. Yeah, it's like, Fucking hell. This is the only Jackson record. I don't even have a Michael Jackson record yet. And that's almost kind of blasphemous. String yourself up on the tree and you bringing down the noose for calling yourself a vinyl collector because you don't have a fucking Michael Jackson record. Well, whatever. This is fucking fantastic. As well as her next record, uh, Rhythm Nation, which I would really like to get on vinyl as well. I like that one even more. On to the next shelf. And we're going to start off with another one of my favorite records as of recent, the Heavy Metal soundtrack. I told you it was gonna be coming back. This is a compilation record to the 1981 animated anthology film, Heavy Metal. Very weird and bugged out film, but has so, so much great music attached to it. 
And it's all right here. Like this may not have a lot of new wave stuff on here, but this is like one of the best collections of early 80s rock music that you could possibly get. Let me just go through the list here. You got Black Sabbath, Blue, Blue Oyster Cult, Cheap Trick, Devo, Donald Fucking Fagan with True Companion, which is in that transition period between his tenure at Steely Dan and his solo stuff. And it sounds fantastic. Don Fielder of the Eagles, Grand Funk Railroad, Sammy Hagar, Journey with Open Arms before it had become a hit, Nazareth, Stevie fucking Nicks, Riggs, and Trust. I don't know who those bands are, but their songs on here are really fucking good. Especially, Radar, 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 Radar. Oh, hell yeah. And just looking inside, there's a lot of really fun imagery here. I have this on vinyl, I have it on fucking CD. The only thing I don't have it on is cassette. I might just get it on there too, because I, I don't even have a cassette player. I fucking love me some heavy metal. It's a good thing about now we're on the high shelf, I don't have to like reach down and rip my pants. Herbie Hancock with Headhunters, an all-time jazz fusion great. This is when he started experimenting with, like, this is just a great, Jazz fusion funk record, one of the boppiest songs of all time, Chameleon. And all the other tracks here too are really good. Fucking Watermelon, as well as especially Vine Melter, really, really nice. And I love this album cover. This album cover is great. Back cover is really cool too, and yeah, I know there's like a bit of a tear here, but like, so long as the record itself is fine, I don't really get too much of a shit about the cover. My vinyls are falling apart. <laughs> and next up, we have the only Hall & Oates record that is worth owning, JK. Abandoned Luncheonette. Uh, this was before they had made it big. This is another album I'd listened to in my youth. And I found it in a uh, an antique store that only had this and the, the record. It, it didn't have the protective sleeve that it now has. Uh, didn't even have the inner sleeve either. Uh, and I have no idea how, because it looks as grimy as any record that's been sitting untouched for like 10 plus years in an antique store possibly could, but it sounds just fine. It sounds really good. And this just has a great collection of singer-songwriter folk rock music. She's gone being probably the best well-known song here, but a lot of really good stuff here too. When the morning comes, and that and the last song in here is just so so much fun, so goofy, especially towards the end when the banjo comes in. Oh, I love these guys. Oh, you know who I also love? I love me some Grover Washington Jr. Fam. Uh, first one. This is Mr. Magic. This was his breakout record, as the title track, Mr. Magic, as well as Earth Tones. Passion Flower, Black Forest, great, great jazz funk, just great, man, especially that first track. Oh, God, this is a killer opener. And just look at this guy, he is just having the fucking time of his life. So it gets a bit more serious on his next one. Feel So Good, that's not Feel So Good. Feel So Good, uh, which uh, is a bit tighter than his other one, uh, but this uh, just is as groovy and is as fun. Got fucking feel so good, knucklehead, as well as I believe Hydra. I think it's called Hydra. Yeah, Hydra. A lot of really funky gold. And then going back into a more smoother direction here, this is a secret place. <sighs> Title track. Just heard it randomly one day and instantly fell in love with it. And the rest of the stuff here is definitely like in that more jazzier direction than the last two were. And it still sounds really fucking good. Like this guy is just an excellent, excellent player. If I haven't mentioned, he's a saxophone player. And you'll probably know him well for his other stuff, which I will show in just a second here. There, we got Wine Light. This is probably his biggest record behind Mr. Magic. Uh, it's the one that has just the two of us, which... Y'all fucking know that song. And all the other stuff on here is really good. Uh, his stuff was getting a, maybe a bit more commercial around this time, 1980, 1981. But still excellent stuff. Like the title track is great. Uh, Let It Flow, Take Me There especially. That's really good shit too. 
Then we got Grace Jones here with Wow Leatherette. Grace Jones, she is just a godly, godly woman. Not a great a singer, but a fucking great, great showman. And she has a lot of really fun albums, like she started on disco, and this was like her transition into a more poppier, reggae-ish, new wave direction. And a lot of great tracks. Uh, title track, of course, Private Life, sung in here called Bullshit. It's, it's nice. This nightclubbing and my Jamaican guy, or living my life? No, live my life. That's those are the albums first that I would like to have. So have all of them. That'd be great. I want to add more to this. I do have another on the way, but for now, uh, we have first two Gorillas records, the self-titled and Demon Days. Um, I have gone back and forth over which are my favorite Gorillas records because I do love them. Started out in alternative, punky, trip-hop-ish territory. A couple hip-hop mixes here and there. It sounds so weird and eclectic, but it's great. And then it went in a bit more alternative rock direction over here, but also a bit grander, more orchestral with uh, Demon Days and like, Kids With Guns, Dirty Harry, Feel Good, the biggest single of theirs. Great, great shit. Um, their most recent one, uh, Song Machine. I have that coming soon because I really love that one. It's one of my favorite records from last year. And I'd like to get the other ones uh, too. Even, God, what was the 2011 one that they had? Uh, their other ones are just as worthwhile. Oh, fucking finally. Okay. Let's go back into slightly more obscure music. One of the best unknown prog rock bands of the 70s, Gentle Giant. This is their fourth album, Octopus. Uh, fortunately, I don't have their first three because their first two are really fucking expensive on vinyl. And the third one I haven't checked, but I think it's just as pricey. But the other ones are much cheaper, so that's why I went with them. And Octopus is a really, really good record. These guys mix a bunch of weird melodies, weird time signature and weird structures in their progressive rock and it all sounds great. Even then, I would still say their stuff is really accessible despite how weird it can get, even on this one particularly. Because look at this, this is just one of the most fun record covers I've seen in a while. It is a jar with the octopus, the titular octopus in it. It's, how can you go wrong? It also has the uh, giant face on there. Get a, get a good old zoom. Then you got um, In a Glass House, which was the first record of theirs I had listened to. Um, there's also a nice little cover here because uh, it's like a like a see-through holographic. And all the uh, silhouettes uh, neatly drawn. It's really cool. But yeah, this had uh, The Runaway. That's the first track, and that's what immediately got me into this. Like, just listen to that track, and like, if, if that does it for you, then you're gonna fucking love these guys. Over the years, I've grown a little colder on this. I think uh, after The Runaway, the next few tracks aren't that great. But the back end is fantastic. Um, so, definitely worth it, though. Definitely worth your time. Worth even more of your time, though, is the next record after that, Freehand. Um, I think right behind their second one. This is my favorite of theirs. Again, that first song, just the same. It just... Just bouncy and fun. It shows how bouncy and fun these guys can be. And the rest of the songs here are just as great. I think this was their most popular for going by like chart success. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely worth, definitely worth your time. So, so good. And the last one of theirs I had was the next record after that, which is where their declines started to happen. But I've, I've really grown on this record. It's called Interview. But yeah, this is fun as fun as the other ones as well, especially the second track on here, Give It Back In The End, which is where reggae influence starts coming in, because everyone is fucking doing it during the mid to late 70s and 80s. Yeah, it's not quite as strong as their other albums, but honestly I think this is probably my third favorite of theirs right behind um, Freehand and the second one. Just name escapes me, and I feel ashamed for that having happened. Gentle Giant, again, Runaway, look it up. 
listen to it. If you love it, you'll love these guys. And we'll go a little further into obscurity with the uh, finna thing, finger thing, finger thing, and the big red nebula. Uh, this is a, an acid jazz electronic instrumental filled record that I uh, just picked up on impulse online because one of the tracks on here, I think Walk in Space, was like some stupid remix. A meme video with H.H. Gregg, which there are a lot of videos of, but it had this song with uh, the H.H. Gregg ad, uh, like, playing over it in, in great meme fashion, and I love it so much, I listened to the actual song itself, and the whole album is great too, so I just got this for the hell of it, and let me just look at this real quick, this is a really, really cool gatefold as well. But yeah, like, definitely electronic, but they have, like, uh, upright bassist <laughs> among their ranks, and it just sounds really f funky and weird. But definitely far, but, like, definitely far from, like, too out there. This is, I would still say this is, like, again, uh, look up uh, Walk in Space. Yeah, really good stuff. I should check, definitely check out these guys' other things. Um, I think this was definitely the most popular. Um, but I'm sure they would have some more worthwhile, worthwhile records in their catalog. And here we got a Fifth Dimension, the best of compilation was released, uh, probably around the height of their career. I had the cassette of this and just listened to it so much in my youth, so of course I was going to get the vinyl. Fifth Dimension, man. They are just a wonderful, wonderful soul group. Pop soul, pop and soul... Pop and Soul with a lot of really great hits, most if not all of them. The most popular ones are on here. Up, Up and Away, Aquaria, Up, Up and Away, Aquarius, One Less Bell to Answer. Up, Up and Away, Aquarius, Let the Sunshine In, One Less Bell to Answer. Last night I didn't get to sleep at all. Oh, oh. And Stone Soul Picnic, which is another one of my all time favorite tracks. Oh lordy, that is some soul. Yeah, there. I don't doubt that their albums are just as worthwhile, but this has served me well over the years. And it's a great sounding record, despite being a bajillion fucking years old. Alright, next to uh, are some uh, very picky picks, I should say. Because there are two albums from Everything But The Girl. You'll probably best know them for that missing song. But these guys... The duo, I should say, are a very, very solid group. Had so many weird transitions throughout their career. All different kinds of music. And it all started here with this jazzy, bossa nova, kind of rocky album. Eden. Eden. It is called Eden. First track in here, each and every one. Great, great, great. Like, those horns at the very start of it just give the... A, the best indication as to how the whole thing is gonna go and it all sounds really really great gotta listen to this a lot more to get all the songs memorized um but uh then we have the one of their later records i think this is the second to last record uh walking wounded and this is after they had struck gold with that missing song and moved into electronic music and so they took a lot of electronic influences from all the popular electronic music during the mid-90s, like Jungle and Breakbeat and Drum and Bass, and it all sounds really fucking great. It's still in their style, and it all just sounds so nice and fun. And tragic, of course. Like, they, they always are really good at just writing simple, yet poetically tragic lyrics and songs. And uh, more prog rock people. We got Emerson, Lake, and Palmer with... Um, Pictures and Exhibition, uh, Live One, and Trilogy. Okay, so I'm not a huge, huge classical music fan. I say that despite having spent 10 plus years of my life playing viola. But, but, uh, th but they do love me some specific classical music, and one of them, probably my favorite, has to be Pictures and Exhibition. So f great. No matter who performs it, it always sounds really good. Most of them. I think this is a very interesting experiment 
that these guys tried to do as they were apt to during the early times. But I don't think, but I don't like this nearly as much as the original piece, but I can't fault them for trying because it is still a pretty good record that was live as well. Like they did all of this live, so it's impressive just for that. Now I much prefer their recorded output, uh, specifically Trilogy, is the first first track on here, the Endless Endless Fugue, I think it's called. No, Endless Enigma. The Endless Enigma. The Endless Enigma, just great, great introduction, and the rest of the album is really good too. Really, really big into prog rock, so I can always look forward to those records. Those kind of records, whatever we see here. Mm. All right, so we got most of the. All right, so we got most of the second shelf done, but we are going to just do a quick transition here to just kind of recharge for a little bit. So get yourself some snacks and waters because the, you're going to spend the rest of it watching this, and hopefully it's not been too boring. All right, there you go. <laughs> well, welcome to games on a. Welcome to games on a shelf. We have. This isn't even a game. Where the, where the fuck did this come from? Uh, oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right, let's continue. Next up, Eddie Brickell and the New Bohemians with Shooting Rubber Bands at the Star, the debut album, uh, the one that has the what I am is what I am, what you are or what as well as a bunch of other great uh, late 80s alternative rock. Really nice, really good stuff. Even a bit folk rocky here and there, definitely a little more out there than your Tracy Chapman or Suzanne Vega, but still very quality. Shame they didn't get a whole lot more uh, quality stuff. And here we have Donald Fagan with The Night Fly. Mr. Fagan of Steely Dan fame, his solo debut couple years just a few years after Steely Dan had gone on their break and it's basically just like any other Steely Dan album but without any of Walter Becker's input rest in peace and it's great another album that I grew up with and all the songs in here are fantastic especially the intro IGY New Frontier the title track the Ruby Baby cover of uh, Man, so much good stuff here. It still sounds a bit stiffer than uh, the other Steely Dan works, kind of like Gaucho, but not quite as bad as I could get. So, still very enjoyable. Really, really like it. And flashing forward to one of my favorite rappers of the modern era, Mr. Denzel Curry. Two of his albums here, two of his recent albums here. His second most recent and his most most recent. Unless you count unlocked. Taboo and Zoo. Some really, really good southern hip hop trap. This one I like just a little bit better because it's a bit more grander and cinematic, I guess as you want to call it. But I think it just has a lot of better songs as well. This one has a lot of great tracks too. Both excellent quality. Like, even if you're not that big a fan of trap music, I highly recommend you check this guy's stuff out at the very least. Really, really good. Oh, this is one of the heavier ones. It's Def Leppard. Def Leppard. Def Leppard with Hysteria. Man, you just had... This is like one of the biggest records of the 80s. And has just so, so many quality tracks. Pour Some Sugar On Me. Armageddon It. Animal. The title track. Woman. Woman. Even the ones that weren't singles, like Gods of War. Fucking great shit. Great, great shit. Definitely one of the best glam metal records that came out in the late 80s, which isn't really saying much, but still really, really fucking good stuff. Dan Folkelberg, the Greatest Hits collection. I think the guy was a bit more better as a singles artist, although I do like that Souvenirs album that he did. This has most of his best tracks on here, and I think this is just the best possible collection that could be on this thing. It sounds great. Leader of the Band, one of my favorite songs of all time, but you also have Harder to Say, and Longer, and Same Old Lang Syne, that one Christmas song that's not technically a Christmas song, but it somehow keeps being played all the time during Christmas, and 
it's one of the better tracks to listen to during that time that isn't another rendition of Jingle Bells or <sighs> Mary did you know <laughs> fuck off realized I've been doing a fair amount of alt rock like 80s alt rock during this video and you can't have alt rock without like, they started out as that kind of post-punky new wave, but went to a completely different direction, just morphed into their own jangly alternative rock style. Kind of sort of like R.E.M., but more British, and they actually kind of grew out of that post-punk scene. This is their 1985 record, uh, the Head on the Door. Another great batch of songs on here. Fucking In Between Days, Close to Me, A Night Like This. Sinking is a fucking excellent closer. I'm ashamed to admit this is the only Cure record I have on vinyl, but I do want a lot of the other ones, especially <sighs> Faith and 17 Seconds. That would be great. Oh, and Disintegration. I gotta have Disintegration. But going back into the more folkier direction, we got Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Got the first self-titled record and then their second self-titled record, which is just titled CSN. Two more albums that I grew up with, and they're fucking wonderful. Especially this one, with uh, Sweet Judy, Blue Eyes, and Mare Crash Express, and 49 Reasons All in Life. Run From T This one's just as good, though. Run From Tears, Shadow Captain, Just the Song Before I Go, Fair Game. Oh, man. And before you ask where it's Deja Vu, I don't have Deja Vu yet. I will... Crazy World of Arthur Brown, the uh, only, technically the only album from this guy's band, the one with, you know, fire, I give you to burn. And this album's just as whacked out as that song was. It's so ahead of its time, especially for the late 60s, just fucking nutso, psychedelic, kind of prog rock. It's just very, very good shit. And this album cover is also just absolutely wonderful. Love this guy's look and the inverted image on the back. Oh, we got another batch of just one band's records here. Oh. So one day a couple years ago, just finished listening to an uh, album rip on YouTube, and it switched over to another album, and that album was titled Cassiopeia Mint Jams. And boy, it was a jam. And because I love that one so much, I looked into the other albums that the band had come out with, and it's all quality all great shit. They're like one of the most popular jazz fusion bands to come out of Japan, and they have several of their records on vinyl as well. Most of them in ports, but a few surprises here and there. First off, their uh, seminal live record, I believe it's just called Thunder. Uh, the album cover that I've been seeing is not quite this. I think they had just had alternate ones uh, for their first few. But yeah, this is just songs from their first two albums played live. And it all sounds great. great. Recording, great production, excellent playing, excellent renditions. And then we have their next studio album. Unfortunately, I don't have the first two because they're fucking pricey as hell. Thankfully, this one was not nearly as pricey. Uh, fucking Makeup City. This is probably my favorite of theirs that I've listened to. Which isn't to say like any of the, which isn't to say any of the rest of them that we'll be looking at are bad, but. Uh, I think I've just listened to this one the most, and it just itches out the other ones ever so slightly. Because it's just a great collection of jazz fusion instrumentals from the early 80s, where I think the production is the most raw and clear, and you're introducing synths around this time, and it all just came together so wonderfully. The best thing about this, though, is, if you can look at the back there. This is not an import. This was actually sold in America on that label that I had mentioned at the start of the video, the uh, Alpha US label. Uh, they brought this and another album over to the US, so I managed to get this on the cheap. So yeah, it definitely helps to look if a foreign band's music is was released here in the US. So yeah, really great to have this. I played this thing endlessly. And their next record uh, was actually, I believe, recorded in America and uh, produced by uh, an American person as well. This is Eyes of the Mind. Um, it is basically just a bunch of, a fair amount of their older songs re-recorded um, for this American release. A couple new ones here and there. And it took a little while for me to get into this one because I don't think the renditions of some of their uh, older songs aren't the best versions on here, but it's still just 
absolute quality material. And this was also released on Alpha Records US. And yeah, it sounds fantastic. It's another promotional copy, I think. I have to wonder just how many of these were actually sold. I can't imagine a whole lot, because I mean, the label folded not much long after, so they didn't make that much of a splash here in America, which is an absolute shame. The power of the internet has changed that for the better. And then we go back to the imports. Uh, this is their next record after Eyes of the Mind. Uh, Crosspoint. Again, just another absolute quality record. It has some of my favorite tracks on here, especially the intro cut, Smile Again. It's just so smooth and comfortable, and I love this album cover too. It's a Crosspoint. Get it? It just looks like a, it looks like a cross point. Also came with this little tab here. I think it was on the Thunder record, but I didn't quite show it off here. Uh, a lot of Japanese vinyl ra records just have this on here. Um, it's kind of like has additional promotion and just kind of keep it cohesive and has a lot of the info here as well. Sometimes I think about taking it off, but I, I just want to maintain the original covering as much as possible. And then, of course, uh, we have the album in question that got me into them, Mint Jams. Now, I cannot praise this record enough. If you've not listened to it, go seek it out. It's not really that difficult. Again, there's like a, a video on YouTube that millions of people have listened to, or has millions of views. I also forgot to mention, they're on streaming now. For the longest time, they were not not available for streaming in the US, but like late in October, or a couple months ago, they just were plopped onto there, we were none the wiser. But this one especially, uh, right, right under Makeup City, this is another one of my favorite records from them. So great. Look it up, great shit. And then we have their next record, uh, 4x4, which was just another really quality one, but is notable for featuring American jazz musicians, including the person who had produced the uh, Eyes of the Mind record. These guys were so ahead of the curve, man. I just I just can't believe these guys weren't bigger in the US. Or at least had a, more of a cult following. I imagine they might have, um, especially, like they were in the know working with these people. Three of which uh, would go on to make the band Foreplay, which, um, they're, they're all right. Kind of like the, the poor man's ver They're clearly kind of aping this style, but they just did, didn't, didn't quite do it as well as they could have. And then after that, um, we got photographs, and this is kind of where their free-flowing playing kind of gets a bit diminished, but there are still a lot of really good tracks here. Just kind of prefer the earlier instrumentation just being so jazzy and not improvisational, but just free-flowing and fun. This is still a ton of fun, though, even if the instrumentation's a bit tighter. Still a lot of great shit on here. Uh, um, their next record I do not have. I did order it but I ordered it from China, and it's, uh, uh, it's uh, taking its time to get here, let's just say that. However, I do have their next record, Down a Beat, and kind of still missing the freedom of earlier albums, but I have really come around to this because it's just so fucking catchy, man. Honestly, I think this might be right under Mint Jams as my next favorite. I don't really care for rankings, as it may come as a surprise, but I definitely do think this is one of their best ones as well. And like even their later stuff, which not quite as good, but still just quality jazz fusion. Yeah, Cassiopeia, really a fucking good band. If you've not listened to these guys again, check out Mint Jams. You will not regret it. The Cars, with their debut album. Uh, just another excellent new wave pop rock power pop epic best friends girl just what i needed with just another one of my favorite songs of all time yeah just excellent stuff i really do like these guys i don't think they have the best discography they do have a lot of really good singles but uh that first record is just a, a, a masterpiece another masterpiece here would be, have to be carol king's tapestry one of the best folk rock records I have ever heard. Fucking glorious, man. It's too late, baby, it's too late. As well as the original version of the Gilmore Girls theme, and the original version of You've Got a Friend, which uh, the James Taylor made more popular, but Carol is such a great songwriter. God damn, so many, so many well-written material. Especially on this. 
I sincerely hope the pit stains on my games on a shelf and police shirt don't start showing. All right, we only got the top shelf to deal with and then we'll be done with this. Not a whole lot on here because I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning, but if you're ever gonna start collecting vinyl and you want a shelf like this, of course, but you want to put less records on top than there are on bottom, just a matter of distributing weight. You don't want this fucking thing to topple over and break all of your hard, hard vinyl records. Which are very difficult to break, but they're not too difficult to warp. Uh, but first off, we got here The Buggles with The Age of Plastic. If you know one song from these guys, it's gonna be Video Kill the Radio Star. But just like with Thomas Dolby and She Blind Me of Science, the album that it was on is just as good as that song was. Another absolutely wonderful synth pop record. So fucking great. Clean, clean, kid dynamo. I love you, Miss Robot. So, so, so good. But yeah, regardless, really good shit. Also, some really good shit that uh, unfortunately isn't, uh, not played very often because it skips a lot. Bruce Hornsby and the Range with The Way It Is. Of course, y'all know the title track, that's just the way it is. And then all the other songs on here are just as good, too. I think I prefer their second album just a bit more, if only because it has two of their better singles. I love The Way It Is, but uh, Valley Road and Look Out Any Window. Come on, man, you, you, you can't beat those two. But this is also a fantastic piano-driven rock album. But these guys are just kind of in their own range, so to speak. It's really, really good stuff. Ugh, okay, next up we got Blue Oyster Cult with two of their records, uh, Spectres and Fire of Unknown Origin. Take my baby away. Yeah. Guess which one I listen to more. Yeah, the Spectre is a really good record, um, but these guys are like one of those bands that I listen to the albums so many times, but just never, they've never quite grabbed onto me. This one had Godzilla though, so of course I had to get it. Fire of Unknown Origin though, it, that thing grabbed onto me. It is catchy as sin. Oh god, so much great stuff on here. Oh god, this is a great, great, great rock record. Like, and it even has elements of new wave, prog rock, and it just all comes together so great. These guys had such a great run in the 70s and early 80s. Really try to listen to the material just a bit more. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Yep, I got me the Billy. Billy Eilish, when we all fall asleep, where do we go? That's gonna be one of the all-time greats in like 40 years. And this is also just one of the only ones that I'll actually show the um, uh, the vinyl for because you think it'd be like, I don't know, pitch black or something extremely dark, but it's actually a colorful peach. And it looks nice, looks great. But yeah, this was another one of my favorite records of 2019. Uh, maybe a popular choice, but it's an absolute quality album. Like, Billie Eilish has been one of the best pop stars of the last uh, decade, I would say. Her material is just so absorbing and hypnotic. You should see me in a crown. Your silence is my favorite sound. Watch me make them bow one by one by one. Oh no, here's the warped record. So this is Bernard Wright with Nard. Uh, this guy was a piano player, really popular in like the New York jazz scene during the early 80s and late 70s. He was only like 16 when he made this record. And this is the one that I recommended to you guys at the end of the GTA 5 video, if you've seen that or you haven't seen that or whatever. Because this has Habo Glabo Treban and a bunch of other great jazz funk songs on here. Even the ones that he sings, which not not the best singer. They're still really good too. Sadly, this is the one of the warp records that I mentioned earlier, but it does still play fine on the standard slip mat that came with the uh, record player that I use. I like to have consistency, though. I don't want to have to be switching out slip mats just to play records correctly. And I've tried to get this thing back into position. Th this thing must have been like crushed beneath several other records as well. 
It, it just, it ain't, it ain't, it did not budge at all. Yeah, I had like 40 pounds on this thing for like a week and it did nothing. Still, excellent record. Highly recommended. Check it out. Another band you should check out if you have not already. The B-52s. Uh, this is their third album, Whammy. Not one of their more popular ones, but I've grown to absolutely love this one just as much as their other ones. Even fucking Bouncing Off the Satellites, their next one after this, the one they made after their guitarist died. Uh, I, I really like that one too. But this one is just a bouncy, bubbly, new wave record that definitely emphasized more drum machines and electronics than the other two had, um, which not quite my preference, but when the songs on here are just as catchy as all hell. That's why me make butter be Queen of Las Vegas. This is the one that also had the, um, that one Yoko Ono song um, that they had originally recorded this. The original pressings for this uh, had their cover of that song on here, but um, there were some copyright concerns, I think, so additional pressings or future pressings had like a reworked version of one of their older songs. I think it was called Moon 83. And that's the one that's on streaming, but uh, this is nice to have, especially. Uh, it kind of makes it just slightly more valuable. Okay, uh, this one, this is Ashford and Simpson with A Musical Affair. Ashford and Simpson, they're one of the best songwriting pairs of the 70s and 80s. They've made a lot of really good stuff. I'm not the biggest fan or even the most well-versed in their discography, nor do I even care for this record that much because I just saw it in an antique store and really liked this cover. I think this is a, an actual, absolutely great cover. But I mean, the album itself is not bad, per se. Uh, it's just a kind of generic R&B stuff from 1980, stuff that you would expect. Nothing really surprising, nothing too bad either. It's uh, definitely a pleasant listen. And then three more from one single artist, and that would be Mr. Richard D. James himself, Aphex Twin. I care because you do. Legendary electronic musician, producer, this is his 1995 record, where he dabbles in trip-hop and very abrasive and scuzzy and, uh, electronic instrumentals. This is the one that had Ventolin on here, which just a fucking ringing sound as part of your main melody is ballsy at the very least, and it somehow works if you can stand that noise. And it's especially potent on vinyl as well. But he also has plenty of softer tracks to go through. Alberto Balsam and Moo Kid. Really, really good stuff. Maybe it's a bit, just a bit long-winded, but I really appreciate just how experimental and loud and weird this thing can get. It's a lot of fun. Just as fun would be his next uh, full-length record, the Richard D. James album. This is where he was experimenting with drum and bass and jungle music, and like this is definitely his take on that because, I mean, if you know your electronic music, you know what jungle music sounds like. It's very quick and breakbeat, but it's kind of sort of repetitive. This guy just takes that and just puts all of the drum hits in so many weird, random places, and it comes together so wonderfully. It's great. Fast, paced as hell, and sounds fantastic, especially on vinyl. And last but not least, this is his um, follow-up EP, uh, Come to Daddy. This one has, of course, the Come to Daddy single, as well as some of his other best tracks on here, Flim, especially that that one. It's just one of the most beautiful electronic sound. That one's one of the most beautiful electronic songs I've ever heard in my entire life. Excellent shit. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have all of the songs that are actually on the EP. And contrary to the other records, uh, this has to be played at uh, 45 RPM. It sucks because the last track on the streaming version of this, I believe, is called IZ-US. Another one of his great soft tracks. I think this guy's known for just so much weird instrumentation, but I think a lot of his softer tracks just work a lot, lot better as well. I'd like to have more of his stuff, his earlier material, even the weird, super long ambient record that he did uh, right before the um, I Care Because You Do. 
Uh, just because I'd probably put that in the background and then fall asleep to it. Okay, home stretch. Ugh, Mine, get out of here. Sorry, I meant to say get out here, Mine. This here is Mine with Limbo, his most recent record, one of my favorites of last year. There's a lot of great hip hop on here. Excellent personality. I love this guy's lyrics. I love just his goofy, goofy voice. It sounds nice. Portland for the win. And next up, uh, another relatively recent pickup. This is uh, American Football with their debut. I've not listened to this thing a whole lot. I mean, uh, the Never Meant, of course, with the, that intro song that everyone fucking knows. Is that intro drum beat and guitar loop. It's very good. All, all the other songs on here are just as good, too. It's very weird and, again, calming and soothing. Even as, like... Even has like fucking trumpet shows up a couple times. It's great, great stuff. This one's America Hat Trick, I believe it's their third record, and this is another antique store find that. I mean, if, if this was the only one I could find, this in the Ashford Ashford and Simpson record, I should have just cut my losses and not even bother. Because the album itself is it's all right, but I really only got it just for the Muskrat Love single. Uh, that was on their greatest hits, which is the one I actually have listened to a bunch. They do have a lot of really great hits. Um, the albums themselves were kind of eh, as far as I can tell, at least. Uh, this, again, this one's fine. I don't necessarily mind it. I kind of like the cover. I like the little silhouette on the back here as well. It's pretty cool. And I don't care what you say. Muskrat Love is a fine song. Uh, not the Captain and Tennille rendition, though. That one's trash. Oh, nice. Uh, Alice in Chains. Jar of Flies. I listened to these guys a lot in college. This one, I wouldn't say it was life-changing, but it definitely helped me get out of a rut that I was kind of in when, around the time that I first listened to it. So, of course, down the line I was going to have to get the vinyl. And these guys are just so good at their style of grunge. They are a little sludgier, but on records like this, they're more acoustic instrumentation is also really great. I Stay Away is probably one of my favorite tracks from them, and of all time, it's fucking fantastic. Rotten Apple 2, that first track, oh my god, it's so good. But the best thing about this particular release is that it also comes with a surprise. Came with Sap. Yes, they're first EP, the one they uh, released right before their second record. Only has four songs, actually technically five, but um, this is where they were kind of starting with that ac acoustic grungy sound that they had perfected on Jar of Flies. Not on their studio albums, but uh, with these EPs specifically. And yeah, this is just as good as Jar of Flies. It's fucking... You even have fucking Anne Wilson of Hearts show up on a couple songs. Because why not? And she sounds great on them too. Excellent, excellent. Ooh, yay, more. Ugh, we only got two more bands to go, fellas. Uh, we only got two more artists to go, fellas. That's when you know we're dwindling, winding things down. First up here, we got three records from the Alan Parsons Project. Uh, first one I have here, the iRobot record. It's kind of sort of the breakout record for the band, if you could call it that. Uh, it, this, is just a, this is just a great prog symphonic rock record. I fucking love these guys. It's cool. I think you, you can just call these guys cool. Any prog rock band could just be called cool. It'd probably have to be this. And they're also one of the best produced prog rock bands as well, because you got Alan Parsons. When you have Alan Parsons on your record, it's always going to sound good. Even if he's just engineering it. And then uh, one of their later records, I uh, kind of skipped the other two uh, before, after this one. And just went to The Turn of a Friendly Card, um, which kind of came as a surprise to me because I listened, I was listening to this in the, in, while on my way to work, and the title track, when it came on, it just like unlocked a hidden memory in my head because I had listened to this eons and eons ago as a kid, but I'd forgotten about it, but I just knew that one melody. <laughs> Yeah, it's just as great as I remember, especially time. But yeah, another excellent fucking record from this band. And uh, their next release, Eye in the Sky, 
is just as good. Still not losing their edge at all. Maybe just a, a little bit, but you have the killer combination of Sirius, which transitions into the title track, Eye in the Sky, their most popular song, and one of their best. And there's a lot of other really good stuff here too. Silence and I, with that just sudden transition into this fucking great bombastic orchestral sequence. And those horns and the drum came in. God. Ugh. Nice. And the rest of the album is really good too. Quality band, quality band. Okay. So if y'all remember, um, I uh, had... Uh, uh, showed off the Malibu Ken record, which was a duo of Aesop Rock and Tobacco. And um, now I just have a bunch of Aesop Rock records uh, to finish this off with. Could have very well started with, but whatever, that's just how the cards are played. First off, we have Float here. Um, this is his first widely available record, because he did have a record before this, but that was only like on. sold on like, I don't know, 300 copies or something like that. Not a lot of people got it. Uh, a lot more people did get this one, though. This is specifically the 20th anniversary re-release that had that came in a bunch of colors. I chose blue, of course, because I like blue. Out of the three available, it was the most appealing color, and yeah, it's a nice blue, blue, blue. And yeah, the album itself is really, really good. Maybe just a bit overlong, uh, and he had not quite reached. Uh, his style of uh, just weird abstract lyrics there, but I think the instrumentation just wasn't quite as rich as uh, his later releases have been. Uh, still definitely, definitely worth your time. As was his next record after that, and one of his most celebrated, uh, Labor Days, 2001's Labor Days. Fucking Daylight, man. Daylight is one of the best hip-hop songs I've ever heard. Excellent. Excellent. Again, I really love how this record just flows into one track over another. It just all sounds great. Even if, again, the instrumentals still kind of sound not quite as good as they would get. A little too much on the MIDI end there, but still definitely one of his best records. I'm, I don't know if I'd say it was my favorite, uh, but it is still definitely, definitely a great one. Next one I am still kind of sort of grappling with, but I do like a lot more than I did on first impression, is a 2003 release, Bazooka Tooth, where he just kind of made his own personality, Slim Shady style. A bunch of the tracks kind of deal with that personality. And it's a little more uneven than his previous two records, but still a lot of fun and just as whacked out and weird as those two as well. Cook It Up was probably my favorite track on there, with here just like fucking goes to pick up a girl. I forgot to mention, love is storytelling. Like, that track especially is so fucking hilarious, it's great. You cannot argue with this album cover though, especially on the back as well. Looks nice, looks excellent. Alright, uh, we're gonna have to skip over a couple records uh, to get to the next one. I do have um, his EP that uh, came out after Bazooka Tooth, uh, Fast Cars, I believe it's called. Fast Cars, Danger, Fire, Knives. But that was only on CD, and I really just got it for the lyric booklet that came with it. So I just skipped to one of his most popular ones as of recent years, and one of his most celebrated, too, as of recent years. <laughs> uh, the Impossible Kid. At this point in time, he's a fucking veteran in the indie hip-hop scene, so he can just do whatever the hell he wants. And I just appreciate the more personal angle a lot of these songs have, and I think the instrumentation and sampling is just so well done and catchy as hell. All hell. There's so many great hooks on here, too. Uh, also, uh, over there is the uh, lyric booklet, because it is a massive fucking poster the whole time, so I just plastered it on my wall, and as, in, as you saw in the first part, I also have the t-shirt. I came with it. Good stuff, man. Really like this guy. Uh, especially his most recent record, which came out just a few months ago, Spirit World Field Guide. I had actually just picked this up a, a few weeks ago, I think, and um, yeah, maybe not quite as good as Impossible K. There are a couple songs on here, just not great, but I think the concept is really fun, and he just, again, just goes all over the place and is just the 
weird and strange and lovely, lovely guy that we've all come to know and love. So yeah, really good stuff too. And um, I think that's it. Well, that uh, about does it for the uh, vinyl collection. Well over 100 at this point, and I am definitely looking to add more in the future. Maybe get some of the, I guess, the less popular music, music out there, but I don't know. I usually, there's still plenty of records that I want to get to fill this fucking thing up. Which ones? Well, uh, the ones that come to mind. Craftwork. I desperately need some, of, some fucking Craftwork, because I listened to those guys so much in college, and all of their albums are great. Even the ones that are impossible to get here. But yeah, that stuff on vinyl, I really hope at some point they just reissue it as like a box set or something along those lines, like they, what they did with Sade. And yeah, let's just move this over here real quick, go over to the Spotify page and see what else there is uh, for me to get. All right, yeah, the, at the very top there, fucking Cybotron with Clear. Not sure if either that or Enter uh, would be be uh, viable, but definitely would love to get that. Primus, hell yeah, I would love to get Primus on vinyl. More of The Cure, of course. Uh, always gotta have more of The Cure. Oh yeah, fucking Sonic Youth. I know their vinyls, w w whichever ones they have released, are fucking expensive as hell, but that would that would be a wonderful thing to get. I could at least get a thousand leaves on there. That'd be nice. Either that or goo. Alfredo, uh, one of my favorite albums from last year uh, that I only listened to like a few months ago, uh, earlier this year. I've been trying so hard to get it. I've been just checking the store every day uh, that's on there, but I'm not even sure if the vinyl is available officially there anymore, or will be at any point in the future. You can see here, yeah, it's still sold out. Fucking look it up even more. Alfredo, Freddy Gibbs, vinyl, give me that shit. I love it. Err. Well, what do you know? This is going to be just the glorified uh, vinyl uh, buying tutorial session. Oh yeah, this this one right here, uh, excellent, excellent shit. Uh, Year of the Cat with Al Stewart. That title track is one of my favorite songs I've listened to in the past few years. I love it really uh, a whole lot. <laughs> this is an Argentinian progressive rock record. <laughs> it sounds great, man. A perfect circle. Like, their first two records, I also have listened to endlessly. And those would be great for the collection, if I can get them on the cheap. If they, if they even are on vinyl. Come a long way, baby. Fatboy Slim. Hell yeah, add that to the list. Yep, there's the, uh, the Jungle Giant record that I want acquiring the taste with the goofiest album cover of all time. Prince, absolutely. I, I need prints uh, in my collection. Fucking Talk Talk, the color is spring, especially. I love that one. I love that one so much. More of Def Leppard. Can never can never go wrong with more Def Leppard. Pyromania, that'll be at the top. Ooh, how can I fucking forget Erica Badu? I love Erica Badu. Oh, and Jill Scott as well. Uh, Erica Badu, Jill Scott. The uh, Neo Soul Queens. Those would go great for the collection. I would love to listen to those on vinyl. Okay, anything else here? Um, oh, that Scissor record I really enjoyed. I could definitely, uh, could definitely be down for that. Ooh, Presidents of the United States of America. That first record would go great. I really like that one too. Oh, Foo Fighters. Uh, th that one, the self-titled, I, th I think it's fine. I really enjoyed... I think the color in the spring, if I can fucking find it. There it is, the color and the shape. The color and the shape, that's what it's called. Oh yeah, Midnight Oil. Diesel and Dust. How can we sleep when our beds are burning? Great Australian band. Another great Australian band, and one that I would really like. Uh, Divinals with Desperate. I'm going to love the shit out of whatever version of the vinyl I get for that. Because I love the hell out of that album. Yeah, Green Day with Doogie and Insomniac. Those two are fantastic, and I only listened to them just very recently. They might be giant self-titled. That would certainly go uh, well in the collection as well. Enema of the State. <sighs> what a stupid title. Tubular Bells and the Smiths. I know of Moriarty's reputation, but 
So long as the music's good, I am willing to get anything, especially if it's just a second-hand copy. And I guess just as the most recent one, maybe Rubberneck uh, by the Toadies, that's fucking fantastic. And Only a Lad uh, by Oingo Boingo, the one that has that, you know, that one track. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. 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 I, I, I so yeah, we just have uh, all of these artists that all. So yeah, we just have all of this shit that I would eventually like to get. Let's see, maybe check back in a few years and see what the uh, collection is like then. Uh, but for now, I uh, hope you fellas enjoyed this wonderfully stupid and long video. What the hell am I doing with my goddamn life? And um, if you're interested in any of the, and if you're interested in starting your own collection, just do it. So I can do it. It's it's not really that hard. It's just like game collecting. It's you just fucking do it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you all for watching. If you have been watching the whole time, I very much appreciate it. Uh, link some of your favorite mu put uh, some of your favorite music in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to listen to them. If you put a screamer in there, I'm going to block you. Golden. Yep, thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you later. Oh, you know what? I forgot about the, 